housekeeping rules. Please, if you have one of these, please turn it off. There were no iPhones in 1980. So please turn those off. You don't have to videotape anything because we have videotaping going on tonight. And your favorite actors of Mountain View will all be getting copies of the show. Uh, we, if you've noticed in your program, we have some great things happening on stage right here in November and in 2024. We have a fabulous dance concert here happening on November 16th and 17th. Mountain View has a fabulous dance troupe that auditions every semester and puts on a wonderful concert. We're going to be doing a children's show next March based on an Oscar Wilde fairy tale called The Happy Prince. We'll be doing a 24-hour, 10-minute play festival in May. And yes, we are going to be doing outdoor Shakespeare if it kills us in June. So we'll be doing The Tempest, and we would love to have you all come and audition, take a class at Mountain View College, a theater class, or just come and support us by being here as an audience member. Right now, sit back and enjoy Moliere's The Would-Be Gentleman. Take it away! Woo!
Well, it seems a little depressing and puts me to sleep. I think it should be happy. Maybe you can sing that. But the tempo of the music must fit the words. Ah, I know a great one about love. The house I have no idea. There's a lamp. Uh, 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 lamp. Bob! Bob! Uh, Bob! I thought my dear Jenny was sweeter than any. I thought my dear Jenny was as mild as a lamb. But the truth is not pretty. She's cool and quite petty. The mind was all just an awful big sham. <laughs> Very pretty. And you sing it so well, too. And yet, I never studied music. Well, you should study music since you're learning to dance. Dance and music are joined by... Dallas and Howard. Mm -hmm. You need to tell me that the best and richest people study music. And of course, dance. But I will. But I don't know what I'll find the time. For besides, my fencing master, also fire, a philosophy master, who wish to arrive at any moment. Dance and music are all that really matters. All the disorder in the world, all the wars, are only caused because people are ignorant of music. Yes, all the fatal misfortunes of history, the mistakes of the great generals, all of that because of not knowing how to dance. Is it a war cause because of the lack of harmony? True, true. And wouldn't the result of the world learning music be harming universal peace? Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> when a man is guilty of wrong, in government or say commanding an army, don't we always say that man has made a false step? Yes, yes that is what we say. That is what and is isn't a false step caused by not knowing how to dance? Yes, yes, this is true. So you see the excellent advantages of learning dancing and music. Yes. And to demonstrate, you now begin with the lovely entertainment that we created for your banquet on the theme of love. As you requested. Yes, I know. I'm not stupid. Now, imagine us dressed as shepherds. Shepherds? Why always shepherds? Paintings of shepherds. Little China statue shepherds. A song about shepherds. Shepherds, they, they stink. Singing has been appreciated by shepherds because it is no way natural for a governor or, say, a car salesman to sing about their true passion. Oh, and as part of the performance, we will have our kids. Well, all right. Let's see what you brought. Love is a torture tyrant that fills the heart with strife. Give waste to sights and rapture. Give up liberty and life. Nothing so sweet as loving. Two hearts join in a kiss. Happiness comes with caring. To lose love is no bliss. I love to be in love, but I'm too I must be born. I saw but did not buy a faithful shepherd is. Women are fickle and untrue as ever. I give up on love now and forever. Love is so sweet. Freedom is sweeter. Love is a cheat. Dear love, I adore you. My love, I adore Learn to love and you will see. Your shepherd is so faithful be. Faithful this I like to see. To prove a woman can be true, I offer here my heart to you. But shepherd is, how can I know that what you say is really true? Let us test the fifty, so you trust me and I will go. And, and punished by, by the God shall be the first to fail in constancy. Such noble feeling lifts our heart and gives us hope that love survives. How sweet is love in all its parts. These two shall ever share their lives. <laughs> is that all? Yes, of course. Oh, good. As I said, 
all of this entertainment is for a special someone that's doing me the honor of dining here tonight. There will be three voices, a treble, a tenor accompanied by a bass viol, as well as lute and a harpsichord. Ooh, and a tuba, and a banjo, and bagpipes, and a guitar. I like the way they sound because they're harmonious. Leave it to us. This has to be perfect. I love it. There's the tango in it. What? Now it's my kind of dance. Certainly. Because of this great power, one can see why those of us who possess such skills are excelled, and why the arts of arms excel all other uses sciences, such as dancing and music no, and- No, you see here. Dancing and music are far superior. You are both idiots to try to compare your arts to mine. What? The fancy bits of his ugly outfit. Beware, Vincent Master. I can make you dance. It has to be one cross to be seen in a different key. No fighting in my house! We'll teach this beast some manners! Oh, no, not you too! <clears throat> oh, oh, Mr. Philosopher, they could just hear right. Please, make them stop! What is the meaning of this chaos? They each argue that their profession is the highest art. They even insult each other now, they might kill one another. People, people, it seems you have not read Seneca's treatise on the follies of anger. If you had, you would know that such passion makes the beast of all humans. Reason should be master of all emotion. But he's insulted us both. He despises dancing, my literal employment. And easy, which is hurting. A wise person is above wrongful words. The 
rock implies patience, moderation, and a return to building meaning. Your professors are not equal to mine. Correct. Mine's better. The arts and science of defense are most important for staying alive. What's more important than survival? You are all foolishly and to call your professors the arts. Yours is really the trade of a musical gladiator, a lowly balladeer, and a drunken dancer at a county fair. Why are you doing? together. 
the, uh, the up and the lower under. Oh, 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 oh. Is that all I do? A, E, I, O, I, O, I, O. The opening of the mouth makes exactly a little ring, which resembles an O. Oh, oh, oh. What fine things to know. The vowel U is formed by bringing your teeth near together without entirely joining them and pounding out both your lips. You, you, you. This is true. When pounding out both your lips, it seems as if you're making a face. If you want to make fun of anyone, all you need to say is you, 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 you. you. <laughs> I wish I learned this sooner. Tomorrow, we shall examine the other letters, the continents. Are they just as nice as vowels? Of course, the continent D for No, 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 not now, because you see, I have a secret to tell you. Uh, just come. Very well. I am in love with a woman of great quality, and I wish to write her a love note, which I can then drop to her feet. All right. Do you wish to write to her in verse? No, no poetry. So you desire prose? No. No poetry or prose. It must be one or the other. Why? Because there's no other way to express oneself but through prose or verse. What is not prose is poetry, and whatever is not poetry is prose. So, when we talk, what is that? Prose. So when I say, Nicole, bring me my slippers. That's That's prose. Yes, sir. So I've been speaking prose this entire time without even knowing it. What a gentleman I am. Anyway, the letter. I wish to write in the letter. Beautiful countess, your lovely eyes make me die of love. But I wish it more, more gentle, more gallant. You could, uh, hmm. The fire in her eyes has reduced your heart to ashes. No, no, no. I want none but those very words. Beautiful countess, your lovely eyes make me die of love. Shouldn't it be longer? No. No, those are the only words I want, but made better, arranged, so they are more beautiful. Tell me the different ways I can put these words together. One, the order in which you said them. Beautiful countess, your lovely eyes make me die of love. Or else, of love to die make me, beautiful countess, your lovely eyes. Or else, die your lovely eyes, beautiful countess, of love. Or else, me make your lovely eyes die, beautiful countess, of love. Or else, your lovely eyes make me, beautiful countess, die. So which is best? What you said, beautiful countess, your lovely eyes make me die of love. I got it right at the first time and I never even studied. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you very much. Now please, now come again tomorrow. I shall not fail you. Oh, and my bill. Where is that tailor? Damn that tailor. If, if that tailor were here right now, I'd choke her until her face puffed and her eyes like that. It's a reason. Oh, oh, oh. Mwah, mwah, mwah. We have 20 stitchers sewing your clothes. You sent me a pair, a pair of silk bows so tight I could barely put them off. See, there's already a hole in them. The holes will stretch. The boots you sent me pinch my toes. I don't think so, sir. What? They don't pinch your toes at all. <laughs> and I tell you, they do. It's all your imagination. But this. This is the handsomest suit in town and a masterpiece. It is a great creative challenge to make a suit that communicates your importance without being a dark and boring color. I suppose I am the only tailor in Dallas able to succeed so perfectly. But the design, it's, it's upside down. You, you didn't tell me you wanted them facing off. Was there any need to tell you? All the most important people wear them that way. I thought you wanted the newest style, but if you'd rather have them change. No, 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 no. Will it fit? Of course. 
Wait. Isn't that the same material my last suit was made from? It was so lovely, I decided to cut out a pattern for myself. But, but I paid for that material.
You talk too much too loud for too long. You speak more sense than you do. Why are you taking dancing lessons at your age? And that fool of a 15 months who stops around breaking things with a sword. Both of you are ignorant, I tell you, and they're poof. that when I find the right match for her. Meanwhile, I am improving myself with learning. You should go to a school where fools are punished. You can't understand anything. I understand that none of these teachers teach you anything useful. Except how to bury his derriere. <laughs> you both talk like morons. I bet you have no idea the words you're saying. I'm speaking the truth. No, no, not that. I mean, I bet you can't tell me the exact words you're now speaking. There are spits, there are sensible ones. No, not that either. I mean, what are the words that I am saying this very instance I'm speaking to you now? Silly words? No, the language I'm speaking. What? What is it called? You can call it whatever you like. I call it a waste of time. A big waste of time. <laughs> it is prose, you ignoramus. Prose? Yes, yes, prose. Whatever is in prose is poetry. And whatever is in poetry is prose. Mm. Now, 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 you understand what it means to be educated. Now, now, you. Do you know what you must say when you say the word and the letter U? U? Yes, that's what I said. U. What are you talking about? Just, just try, just try. You want me to say you? That's what I said. But what is it that you do? I say you? Yes. But when you say you, what are you doing? I did what you told me. Of course she did. You are both imbeciles. You pout out your lips. You see, you pout out your lips. You bring a lower jaw to your upper. You see, you, I make this face. You, <laughs> I make the sound. You see, you. Yes. Oh. Yes, oh, 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 as well. And there's a D and an F. F, what do we do this F? <laughs> Obviously, you don't care to be educated. You don't respect the fencing master. He fills the house with dust. I'll show you. Hand me my points. Now, in fencing, when they confuse, it is like this. And the courts, it is like this. That is the way never to be killed. Is that not clever? Now you try. I, I promise not to hurt you. Like this? Like this? Oh, stop! Stop it! Stop! You're not doing it right. You told me to try. I heard you. <laughs> yes, but you must wait until I carry you. Once again, you prove you are a fool. A foolish man who wants to act like a highly park judge. The only thing that I have proven is that I have more sense than you and your bourgeoisie. Yes, yes, you do it so well. You're called play like you follow around with the puppy. Be careful. He is a man of great importance who speaks to the governor as I am speaking to you now. It is an honor to have such a man visit our home. He calls me his dear friend and treats me as his equal, even though we're in public. She's not just a dear friend, man. He borrows money from you every day. You don't understand the ways of the world, my dear. It is an honor for me to lend money to a city leader. I can't do anything less for a man who calls me his dear friend. And what does this great city leader do for you? Blows well, a secret. He won't pay you back. He said he would. And you could trust him not to. He's doing me a favor. What favor? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Oh. He'll disappoint you. He said he won't, he will keep his word. I'm sure he will not. Oh, oh, here he comes. Don't you say another word. He's got a Hush. Oh, just a second to ruin my appetite. Ah, uh, my dear friend Jodé, how do you do? As your servant, sir, and Madame Jodé, how does she do? Madame Jodé does. Ah, Jordan, this is a serious suit. Yeah, you think so? I've never even seen the SMU frat boys wear something like this. <laughs> See, I told you. That's the fool does what he wants to hear. Turn around. Very stylish. Be my humble ugly at the front. Ah, my dear friend Jordan, I've been eager to speak with you. You are the man I admire most in the world. In fact, I'm sure your ears were burning this morning. I was speaking of you, again, to the governor. You hear that? 
the governor. Sir, I am infinitely obliged to you. Please, sir, put your hand Sir, I know my manners. Society says that upon meeting a man of high rank, one Let's not have short ceremony between friends. Sir. Come, come, sir. Put on your hat. We are friends. I am but your humble servant. <laughs> well, if you won't take off your hat, I'll take off mine. Then in that case, I obey. <laughs> I am in your debt, as you may know. Oh, you don't know us for how much. You have lent me money on several cases and been most gracious about it. How many cases, I wonder? Sir, you're making a mountain out of the mobile. But I want to repay you and to show you my gratitude for the favors you have done for me. Oh, I don't doubt it, sir. I have come to go over You see, I'm the type of person that loves to get out of debt as quickly as possible. You and your suspicions. Let's see how we go out Here, I have made a little memorandum. I just want to confirm the amount. Of course. Let's see. <coughs> Some pages here. Oh, the first time, $200. True. Next 60. Yes. Then another 140. 140. Just these three make 460. That is correct. $1,830 to your a hat maker. Hat maker? Sounds right. $2,708 for your box seats. Box seats? True. $4,379 for your kitchen innovations. $4,379. And $1,748 plus 600. And 61 plus 90 for your golf clubs and your golf caddy. Oh, caddy him. Ah, uh, yes, the caddy. What does all that come to? The sum total of $11,800. Exactly right. $11,800. Now add $200 more when you go to go to me today, and I shall pay you this, and then I'll let Jack and make $12,000, which I shall pay you in my first opportunity. Quiet. For the 200 inconvenience you? No, no, no. He said you was a private cash cow. I said be quiet. If it is a problem, I can go somewhere else. No, no, absolutely not. You'll keep that until you know you're drawn. But you hush. I have a good number of people who would be glad to you know, just give it to me. But I want to ask you first, since you are my very best friend. No, no, sir. It is an honor. A great honor indeed. Let me just get my check. Want me to refuse a man of his friends who spoke to me this morning to the governor? Go ruin yourself. You're an idiot. You seem troubled, Madam Jodé. Is anything the matter? I wasn't born yesterday. I'm old enough to see what's going on here. And your lovely daughter Lucille. I haven't seen her today. Is she well? Lucille, my daughter, is right where she should be. How is she getting along? On two legs. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to bring her to a comedy performance at the Dallas Theater Center sometime soon? Oh, yes. I do have such a great bizarre laugh. It's just what I need. Ha, ha, ha. I am confident, Madame Jordan. You had a great many admirers in your young years, being so beautiful and good natured back then. Oh, I didn't realize that grow so decrepit and ancient. Does my head wobble already with palsy through my nip? Have I lost all my teeth? Ah, oh, Madame Jordan. I apologize. I am so absent-minded. I forget that you're so young. Please forgive me. Here's a check for two hundred dollars. I long to be some favor in return. Sir, I am infinitely obliged to you. As I went to my notes, after much pleading, I convinced the lovely countess to dine here and stay for the entertainment you had planned for her tonight. <laughs> Let's go somewhere where my, my wife can't hear. And not until this morning was I able to convince her to Except the diamond ring you bought for her. How does she like it? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Your beautiful gift would undoubtedly help your cause. Thank goodness. When those two get together, I always look like they're plotting something. I made her aware, in a proper manner, of course, of the generosity of the gift and the strength of your passion. Sir, I am so surprised a man of your ranks could go down to such lengths to, well, to help me. One best favors for one's best friend. I'm confident you would do the same in return. With all my heart and soul. Just 
Just looking at that mooch drives me crazy. It does look like they're up to something. Women above all love a spending money on them. Your frequent serenades, your continual gifts, the diamond ring, and the dinner you have prepared for her. All these actions speak volumes more than your own words. No matter what it costs, sir, I must win this countess over. I, I can't seem to control myself over this high society woman. What can I be going on now? See if you can hear what they're saying. Today you will be able to look into her lovely eyes as long as you like. Yes, I have planned everything. My wife is dining with a sister. And she, well, she will be there all evening. Perfect. Your wife would have been an um, embarrassment if she were here. I have given the menu to the cook and organized everything else. I'm confident the entertainment. Hey, you! Get back to work. Uh, let's go somewhere quiet. Why won't you speak? 
have you lost your voice? Shameless hussy! I see this morning's meeting has been misunderstood. Aha, they know what they've done. Our greeting this morning has annoyed them. They've guessed the problem. Why are you being so rude? You, you deceitful woman, you shall not try and unfaithful one, but I shall dump you before you can dump me. Oh, be painful and agonizing to overcome my very past and love for you. But I'd rather stab myself through the heart of walking on particles and come back to you. What he said. <laughs> All this fuss about nothing. Cleante, do you want to know why I had to avoid you this morning? I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Reason with 
a fool like him. So in this case, telling you what he wants to hear isn't morally wrong. It's just a little white lie. You're probably right, but it's amazing to be treated like that. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I just had a very funny idea. Of how? To get you married to Lucille and make the laughing stock out of Jordan at the same time. How? <laughs> it's too funny. What is it? It's a bit of a play, a sort of masquerade. I am a genius! Come, I have gotta get you ready. Are all these women so upset? What do they have in these great men who are fine examples of civility? I'd cut off two fingers if I could live in Highland Park and be a member of the Dallas Country Club. Mr. Durante has arrived with a lady. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Tell them I'll be there in a minute. You see, Dormain, everything is going to be fine. I cannot believe I let you escort me to this house where I know no one. Where else, madam, could you meet a man who loves you and avoids gossip since you won't invite me to your place or come to mine? Every day I receive proofs of your love, I try to refuse them. You force out my resistance because you have this polite kind of obstinacy. Uh, like first, pay frequent visits, declarations of love, pay next, followed by serenades and entertainments and then gifts. I oppose all these things, but you are not easily stopped. And step by step, you have got some kind of spell over me. I try to resist you, but in the end, I believe you will walk me down the wedding aisle. Madam, this is fantastic news. You are a wealthy widow, depending on no one but yourself. And I am my own man, and love you more than my own life. What is the problem with, from this day forward, completing my happiness? Truthfully, Durante, it's almost impossible to find two people who can live happily together. Even two of the most reasonable people in the world have trouble finding satisfaction in marriage. Madam, you can't go drawing universal conclusions from one unfortunate relationship. In short, I always come back to this. The money you've spent on me already disturbs me for two reasons. The expensive gifts obligating me more than I wish, and two, you can't keep spending so much money on me without going into debt, and I don't want to put you in that position. Madam, these are mere trifles of I know what I mean. And this diamond you have forced me to take is of such value. I just don't think that I can actually- Madam, your work to me is far greater than the diamond. It sparkles. Ah, uh, but unfortunately, here comes our host. One step, if you please. <laughs> I beg your pardon? One step back. What? Ah, uh, one step back, if you please, for my third bow. Monsieur Jourdain, as you can see, <laughs> knows his etiquette. Madame, <laughs> it is a great honor that I am fortunate enough to be so happy that you should have the goodness as you have the kindness to grant me with favor of your presence, to, to, to grant me the honor of your presence, and that I, a married, married, married like you, and that having an idiot of my, of my happiness decided to grant me the very privilege to be here. Enough of this. My lady does not need great confidence. She knows you are a man of great wit. He's a downright yoke. Ridiculous enough, as you can see, in his entire behavior. It's not very difficult to see that. This is a very, very good friend of mine. Sir, it is too much of an honor you do. A very polite man. Mm, I have great esteem for him. Madame, I have done nothing yet to deserve this man. Be careful, Harry, not to speak of the diamond you've got for her. Might I only ask how she likes it? No, that would be totally cold. 
In fact, you should act as a gentleman from HP and pretend you know nothing about it. Madame, Monsieur Jourdain said he is delighted to see you at his house this evening. Oh, that's very kind of him. Oh, oh Madame, it is you who I can't. I had the most difficult time getting her to come here. I don't know how to thank you enough. Madam, Monsieur Jourdain says you are the most charming person in the whole world. Still very kind of you. <laughs> Madame, as I said, it is you, the woman, who are kind, Did courteous, and... Sir? And it is time for dinner. Come, let us go in peace. <laughs>
What do you mean, man? What do you take Monsieur Gervais for? Oh, she can take me for whatever she wants. <laughs> Monsieur Gervais? Madam, you do not even know him. Ah, but she can get to know me whenever she pleases. Oh, you are too much. He always has a witty repartee in hand. Madam, did you not see that Monsieur Jourdain ate the leftover pieces of food touched by your hand? Well, I find Monsieur Jourdain to be a completely charming man. Oh, madame, if only I could charm your heart. Well, I could... well, well, well. What do you mean, madam? It is utter nonsense that your husband entertains this beautiful lady and spends his money. I am paying the bill while he lends me his house. So you ought to be a little more careful of what you say and who you accuse. Yes, this is know it all. It is the wrong thing. That host is countless for Beverly Drive with food and entertainment. He does me the honor of borrowing my house, and I am pleased to let him. Nonsense. I know what I know. Madam Jordan, you need a new pair of glasses. I have to be her glasses, so I see clearly enough. I figured it out a while back. I'm no fool. It is wrong of you, as a posted city leader, to encourage the folly of my foolish husband. And you, madam, who are supposed great me, it is either pretty or your honest to create this harmony in my family to allow my husband to be in love with you. Wait, what is this woman talking about? Durante? Why am I being abused by the silly little ravings of this ridiculous housewife? You all can enjoy this show without me. Madam, wait! Dormain, what? Where are you going? Dormain! Dormain, take me my excuse to her and beg her to come back! Uh, you can't throw me in here. You dare embarrass me and try the good people to sit out of my house! You don't see my good people. Then I don't know what stops me you up and off the job from walking out the door. I can't stand this behavior. And all the wives in the will agree with me. My advice to you is to get out of my sight. If only the old bat had shown up. I was just saying such woody things I've never been that clever before. Probably, probably will never be again. What was that? Uh, 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 sir, I don't know whether I have the honor to be known to you. No, no, sir. I have seen that one. That was not about uh, this very artist. Me? Yes, that was one of the beautiful small childs in the wide new world. And great ladies took you up in their soft arms and kissed that down. They kissing me? Yes, I was the bosom buddy of that late great gentleman, your Stephen father. Gentlemen. My father, gentlemen. Oh, certainly. Did you know him well? Of course I did. And you knew him to be a gentleman. There's no doubt about it. Then there are many liars in this world. How so? There are some stupid people, like my wife, that say he was a a salesman. <laughs> him? It, a, a salesman? S scandalous, never, sir. He was a great, great, obliging, clever connoisseur of stuffs. Uh, he found stuffs everywhere, carried these stuffs out of thoughtfulness to his homely home, and was gracious enough as to give those stuffs to his friends for mere chocolate sums of money. Oh, thank goodness that you, that thou, can bear witness to what my father was a gentleman. I will maintain it this truthism obligingly, so sir. Obligingly. Do you have business in the city? Since I last set eyes on your esteemed pater, uh, such an honest gentleman as he was, I have traveled far and wide around the world below. Around the world? I have not been returning from my tedious traveling travel for only four days. But, because of my deep affection for your papa daddy, I have come to bring you the best news in the globally world. What is it? Of course, you know that the 
son of the Grand Poobalu of the Island Nation Poolabu is here in town, staying at the Reunion Tower. Ah, no. <laughs> I am shocked. Shocked, I tell you. The Grand Poobalu is known as a man of great importance. All the world comes to me to greet him. Mm. I had no idea. <laughs> and I have the greatest news. He is in love with Daini daughter, the son of the Grand Poobalu. <laughs> Oh, most fortunate of men, he wants to become your son-in-law law. My son-in-law law could be the son of the Grand Ubalu of the Island Nation Ubalu. Yes, I will summon to him because I know his father tongue and he translates every magnificent thought. He says to me, Alabala, abdomen, crochier, crochium, uh, alabasta, pepini, sassini, bueno, say, which is, of course, to say, have you seen the lovely Tay's personage who exists as a child of Monsieur Jourdain, the, the fine gentleman of Dallas? The son of the Grand Poobalu said I was a gentleman. Yes, and I informed him that I knew you and seen your most beauteous daughter. Ah, he says to me, Marabara bonita chiquita. <laughs> that is, of course, to say how enamored I am with she. Mm. Marabara bonita chiquita means how enamored I am of her. Indeed. But do you know the meaning of the word uh caca rapid sal malchunis? Caca rapid sal malchunis? No, it's that guy. No, 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 it is good. It is honorable. It translates as my dear, dearest soul. Caca rapid sal malchunis means my dearest, dearest soul. I I am confounded. Yes. Uh, my message is this. Uh, he comes to demand your daughter in marriage and in order to ensure that he is a father-in-law worthy of him, he plans to make you a Mama Muchi. A pretty great title in our island nation. Mama Muchi? <laughs> yes, that means prince. And there's nothing more noble than this title, thus making you the grandest of the great lords of the island nation, Bulabu. Please, please take me to the son of the grand Bulabu. He does me grandiose honor. He does me grandiose. Yeah, he is coming hither momentarily. Hither? And she bringeth all that is required for the dignity ceremony. Oh, wow, he, he must really be in love. So much so he standeth not for the, how you say, delays. My only worry is that my stubborn trumpet of a daughter has decided she will marry none other than her useless boyfriend, a man called Cleonte. <laughs> Do not make one great error with this. I know she will agree to the wedding when she sets her eyes on the son of the Grand Poo. The Grand Poo Yes. Partly because the son of the Grand Poo closely resembles the young Cleante. I have just seen this Cleante for myself, and her love may easily transfer from him to the son of the son of the Grand Poo. <laughs> no, hard. I hear him coming. <laughs> there is he. Ambush a Kima who smells the eggplant. Uh, he says, may your heart be uh, all the while in bloom like a cutaeus rose tree. I am as high as the most humble of humble servants. <laughs> uh, uh, humble Serventini Zuzu uh, Simba Mustafa Marini. <laughs> uh, he says, may heaven grant you the strength of many lines with uh, strong, sharp teeth and the ponderous patience of sanguine serpents. <laughs> I, he does me too much honor, and I wish him all prosperity. The, the prosperity of uh, Holland Junk Cook, BTS, uh, Marini, Barini, Briano. Bene, bene, bueno. He says you should go into quickly in order to prepare yourself for the wedding this very day, and so you can see your daughter as soon as possible. All that is said in only three words? Astonishing. <laughs> This language is quite astonishing. Uh, go quickly with it. Oh, this takes the cake. I've never seen such a stupid man so eager to make a fool of himself in public. If we'd written his lines out any better, you couldn't have played his part better. Uh, 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 sir, please, uh, help us with this problem we're working on. It'll give you many moments of amusement. Oh, it is you, Cody. I would have never known you in that disguise. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, but uh, we're planning to marry off the son of, or sorry, daughter, to uh, of Monsieur Jourdain, to my best friend. If it was you to think this up, 
It cannot fail. Thank you, sir. Tell me what you need from me. Let's go somewhere uh, no one can hear us. You'll see part of the plan acted out, and I'll tell you the rest.
But I, I am so honored that you decided to arrive here so that I might extend my most humble of humble apologies for that, for that awful scene my wife left. Up uh, there is no need for that. I excuse commotion of that kind. Your love is obviously very precious to her, and it's not at all strange that having a husband like yourself <laughs> might cause problems. Oh, madame, but I am entirely yours. As you see, madam, Monsieur Jourdain isn't one dazzled by prosperity. He always knows how to treat his friends. That is the mark of a truly generous soul. Where is this son of the Grand Poulain? Where is your friend? We must pay our respects to him. I'm sitting in my dark going hat. Oh, there he is. Sir, as friend of the most honorable gentleman, your soon-to-be father-in-law, we are going to pay our respects to you and to assist you in any help that you may need. <clears throat> Uh, my way, hero, uh, uh, where is that interpreter who can tell you who you are? Go find him. Uh, now, this, this, senor, you see, he's a grande senor. A grande, grande. Yeah, there you are, where have you been? Inform him that this gentleman and this countess are both people of great quality who wish to pay their respects. Come, you'll see how he acts. Uh, uh, crochier, crocum, uh, alabala, abdomen, uh, anemone. Mm -hmm. You see? Badina, alabala, buduli. I told you. Oh, uh, he says, uh, may the rainy rains of, uh, prosperity wash over you at all seasons, uh, your gardenment and your bullsitch. I told you he could interpret everything. <laughs> oh, oh, my daughter, calm down. Give your hands to this man and the great honor of asking you to marry. <laughs> what's wrong with you? Are you performing in some comedy? This is no comedy. What are you wearing? This man is to be your husband. My husband? That's what I said. Your husband, I've come. And thanks heaven for your blessing. No, I won't marry him. I am your father and you will do as I say. No, I don't. Lucille, come and give this man your hand. Signal you ever since you came in. 
We're in disguise. It's Cleante himself who's the son of the Grand Fubalu. Oh! Oh! And it is I, Kobiel, the interpreter. In that case, I will run away! <laughs> now don't give us away! All right! <laughs> All right, I consent. <laughs> it is clear. All the world submits to reason. You said you would hear me out, but I knew, I just knew he could convince you of my way of thinking. He explained everything, and I'm satisfied. Have you seen this creature? <laughs> well said, madam. And you may lay your mind at rest in case you have any suspicions of your husband. This lady and myself will be taking advantage of the creature in the house tonight. We're also getting married. I give my consent to that too. <laughs> Tell me you're just saying that so you know. Throw off the trap. We must keep up this pretense. A fine job, man. Fine job. Let someone call the preacher. Meanwhile, let us entertain ourselves. Good idea. I've given her to the interpreter man. What? Look at me, Yemen. <laughs> and I give my wife to whomever will have it. <laughs> Sir, I thank you for my love. Why? And if anyone can find a greater fool than him, I'll yell it from the top of the reunion tower. <laughs> <laughs>